Girl, what the hell is going on with this one? I think that there's a lot of strong competition and this one definitely fell toward the bottom and is definitely sucking up. know me my name is neon noir i'm a half italian half canadian drag queen living in belgium and if you're new here go ahead and hit that subscribe button today we are playing my favorite game fab or drab where we rate the looks of rupaul's drag race uk vs the world season two episode three and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful and stay tuned to the end where i let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week this week on the runway the category is reveal yourself where queens must give us two looks in one that is right we are getting reveals on reveals on reveals which is my favorite part of drag so without further ado let's get into it first up it's La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame is coming out in this long white dress with this sash as if she's just coming down from the pageant. She's paired it with this tall blonde hair, and she's definitely giving you pageantry. I will say, when La Grande Dame came out, I was a little bit surprised. This is really simple for La Grande Dame. If this was any other queen, I would probably say this is pretty good, but La Grande Dame has always been giving us fashion. So this was a little bit of a departure for her and I'm not sure I really enjoyed the departure. Lo and behold, as we get to the end of the runway, she turns out that her reveal is a very different type of reveal. She's not pulling off any garments. She's not taking off any hair. She's actually pissing herself. As her garment starts to get wet, it starts to reveal world piss a play on p and a play on world peace and so therefore it makes sense with this sort of sash pageantry gal once they do do a zoom in you start actually seeing all the little details in her garment and you realize the garment is actually well made and that's not surprising considering it's la grande dame i love this reveal i love this gag it's unlike anything we've ever seen and when people said reveal this is definitely not what i was expecting but this is what i'm loving I always say I like to get watch Drag Race to get inspired, and this is super inspiring. All in all, I like it, and it's definitely gonna get a bag. Next up, it's Theresa May, and Theresa May is coming out in this executive realness Marge Simpson look, and I love the camp factor of it. I'm actually really mad because I actually had planned on doing a Marge Simpson look for Halloween this year, but now seeing Theresa May do this, I don't think I could do it as well as her. But that aside, I think that I love her play on this uh, Marge Simpson character. She decided not to go with the traditional Marge Simpson dress, but more of the dress that March system wore when she was being her executive self and owning a business. But as she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off her jacket and she is in this sort of like little dress, but not for too long because she pulls off that dress to be a full naked sexy Marge Simpson. She's got her little corset on and her little blue merkin. Is that what you call a all in all, this is so camp, so fun, so out of the box. And I love that Theresa May is taking a chance with a reveal. You can pretty much do anything and anything is what Theresa May did. And I love this and it is definitely going to get a bag. Next up, it's Tia Coffee, and Tia Coffee comes out wearing this white dress and this big blonde hair. She is definitely giving you season nine Drag Race promo RuPaul. That is right, she is channeling her inner RuPaul, which is really funny and great because on her season, RuPaul said, with a little bit of time and a little bit of makeup, you two can look like RuPaul. So she took that saying and ran to the bank. But the dress doesn't stay on for long because as she turns the corner, she rips it off to reveal another orange look. As she struts down the runway, she pulls off her wig to reveal another beautiful wig underneath and she now is in a complete 90s supermodel RuPaul. That is right, she's going back in time and giving you a full RuPaul look. But we're not done yet. 
she continues one more time to strip it down, this time in a nude and crystal bodysuit, giving you cover of vanity. Fair, RuPaul. That is right. Tia Coffee is not giving you one, not two, but three looks and one. And she is telling the full story of Miss RuPaul and is definitely sucking up. I love this. First of all, I think it is so smart that she is playing to RuPaul's ego. RuPaul loves when queens do this. On top of it, she looks stunning and she is doing multiple looks. Had she done just one, I would have been like, okay, cute, but doing three Oh my God, on top of it, she looks like RuPaul. If she doesn't do RuPaul for Snatch Game, I'm gonna be so upset because girl, look at her. Tia Coffee looks stunning and has definitely got the glow up of the season. All three of these reveals were fantastic and she is definitely getting a bag. Next up is Marina Summers, and Marina Summers is giving you volcano goddess. She said that there's lots of volcanoes in the Philippines, and it's definitely giving you a little bit of a, her culture in her drag. As she walks down the runway, she starts pulling off these little pieces, and this sort of like lava starts flowing out. Honestly, I thought this was so genius and so beautiful. I love these like little reveals because I was expecting some sort of big reveal, but these little ones just give you that little tease that you need. It's a little burlesque. -y. And let's not forget to talk about this garment. This garment is like super edgy, but also super beautiful. And Marina looks stunning. As she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off her sort of black dress to reveal this red dress on the inside, this time flowing to the floor with her long hair. She is the lava inside the volcano. She has erupted and come to life. And she is looking more stunning than ever before. I don't know how Marina Summers does this, but like she is topping herself every single time. And I'm quite shocked. Like I said, when I started watching this season, I had no idea who Marina was, but oh my God, she is slowly becoming one of my favorites. She's turning it up in every single one of these runways and giving you concept on concept on concept. Even if I didn't like the concept last week, she had a concept. All in all, this is freaking fantastic. I love that she went from short to long. I love that she went from big to small. I love everything that she's doing and it is definitely gonna be a fab, 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 fab. Next up, it's Miss Keita Minaj. And Miss Keita Minaj is coming out in this sort of powerhouse suit. She's got this purple suit pants with these big shoulders, this tie, and this big hair. As she walks down the runway and she goes to do her reveal, which is her tie that gets into a smaller tie. And I'm thinking, well, that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting the whole thing to come off. But she said that is exactly the point. She went for a stupid small reveal to kind of like give you that little tease. As she continues to walk down the runway, she finally pulls off this suit and it goes into this gown. This reveal was definitely masculine to feminine and she was definitely playing up on the gender roles. I like the juxtaposition of male and female. I think that when you do a reveal, you have to have a reason for the reveal and there was a good reason for this. I didn't particularly love the suit look. I think that it was very shouldery and very broad, but I did love the gown underneath it. It was very sexy and very smooth. And I love, love, love this hair. Oh my God, that looks like amazing hair. That being said, I do like that she's taking chances. She's, you know, playing with things here and there. I do also like the little stupid reveal of her tie to keep you guessing just a little bit. If I had to do something, I would have changed the first outfit. I, I would have still kept the suit idea, but maybe done it a little bit differently. I'm assuming that the reason why these shoulders are so big is because they are hiding the dress that comes underneath it. So that's probably why. Even though it is not my favorite, it is still a great outfit, and that is why she is getting a bug. Next up, it's Hannah Conda, and Hannah Conda is coming out dressed as the Pope. She's got the biggest hat and the biggest gown and she's walking down the runway. As she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off her Pope attire to reveal a showgirl? Girl, what the hell is going on with this one? I am confused. I know that this is supposed to be a reveals runway, but when a runway is a reveal, then we know the reveal is coming, so 
What are you giving me? For a reveal runway, I need a concept. I need an idea. When she came out as the Pope, I thought, okay, this is strong. Uh, she's gonna reveal, and she should reveal to maybe a Jesus, maybe a nun, maybe a schoolgirl to play on that whole aspect. But no, she went in a completely different direction and gave a showgirl. I do not know what the two outfits have to do together. Now, let's look at the outfits individually. The Pope attire. The Pope attire is not that great. It definitely feels like a reveal. There is no, like... I wish there was a lot more embroidery, a lot more details. If you are religious in any way, or if you've been to a church, you know that religious symbols have a lot of detail, a lot of embroidery, and this is drag, so you need to like cap it up and make it huge. And although she did huge in size, she didn't do huge in the details. She ripped it off and the garment underneath looks stunning. She looks uh, amazing, but to me, it's a little too little too late. Although the second garment is gorgeous, it doesn't make sense to me. And the first one was a little bit of a throwaway. And that is why for Miss Hanaconda, it is gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up is Jomber's Blonde. And Jomber's Blonde is coming out in this long tie-dye pastel dress. And she said that she is representing the rainbow. As she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off her dress to reveal that she is now the pot of gold. She's playing on Irish folklore, so this definitely works into her character and her personality. Um, looking at the dress itself, the first dress, I think that the pastels actually look really good on Jombers, and the dress is very beautifully made. Now, the one thing that sort of bothers me is that there was a 0% chance that this was a rainbow. It's got rainbow colors on it, but for a rainbow, I would have expected something a little bit more bright, a little bit more colorful, a little bit more rainbow-y. You know, maybe a, like a pride-esque dress would have done very well here. She pulls it off and the dress underneath the gold dress is stunning. This is amazing, gorgeous. I love every minute of it. It's a little bit punky and a little bit fashion and she looks stunning from head to toe. I want this dress. It looks freaking amazing. I'm curious how much she paid for it because girl, it's amazing. I like that she had a storyline. Unfortunately, I wish it was a storyline that we would have understood a little bit better without her explanation. And I think that just like that pop of color would have really made the difference. That said, I do like both garments individually as well, even though one is stronger than the other. But I always say that if you're gonna have one stronger than the other, the one underneath should be the stronger one and that it was. All in all, this was an excellent showing for Miss Jomber's Blonde and she is definitely gonna get a bum. Next up, it's Scarlet Envy, and Scarlet Envy is coming out in this white jacket with this blonde hair. As she walks down the runway, she unties her jacket to reveal this orange dress that has matching lining to her jacket. Oof! I think this was a little bit of a stretch. Now, when you see a jacket, you know a reveal is coming. We've seen so many people undo jackets to reveal. I do think that the jacket, the lining matching the dress was a fun little touch, but I was expecting more. I was expecting maybe another reveal to come, or if that was it, then the piece underneath it needs to be really over the top and beautiful. And this was just finally beautiful. I think that there's a lot of strong competition and this one definitely fell towards the bottom. This is not my favorite reveal. I think this would be really fun as a performance piece and you open it and you see it because they give you that little like nod. But for a runway that's called reveals, you know that people are going to be doing a lot. All in all, although she looks good for this runway, it's simply not enough. And that is why for Scarlet Envy this week, I'm going to have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Gothy Kendall, and Gothy Kendall is coming out in this short little jacket dress with long sleeves and big blonde hair. Immediately, I'm thinking she looks super cool, and I'm curious to see what's underneath that jacket. As she walks down the runway, she starts to undo her jacket, only to find out that actually her sleeves are the only thing that come off, and that the dress is still a dress. 
I didn't see this one coming. I thought that she was for sure gonna rip off the jacket and there was gonna be something underneath. So I like this little in between. But then she goes ahead and takes off her dress to reveal another piece underneath. She said that she is now the 60s housewife and she's looking for her kids. She rips off her dress to reveal that her kids are on her boobs and she's in this sort of like armor-esque body attire and oh my god i love this this is this is camp this is elegant this is fashion this is weird and it is such a vibe i think this is so cool so original so unique but that's kind of where it ends and that's kind of what surprised me because she was wearing such large hair i was fully expecting her to take her wig off and have something else underneath for another reveal that being said all the reveals were super great i think the hair reveal would have been just that little piece extra to really take it over the edge all in all i love this look it is super cool super original and definitely gonna get a bam and that is it for this runway. All in all, I think this runway was pretty good. Some really great concepts, some really nice fashion. Even my drabs weren't even that drabby. Like compared to some other seasons, these queens are turning it up. Enough about that. I know why you bitches are here. You bitches are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Scarlet. Aww. Envy. All in all, I like the dress, but I just don't think it was enough for this competition and this set of queens. It was definitely one of the weakest. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Marina Summers. That is right. I think that both garments were excellent. I love the concept. I love that she tied it into her heritage. And I love this like little peekaboo uh moments while i was watching this my mouth was just dropped and like loving every minute of it my god marina summers who knew y'all that is it for this week's episode do you agree or disagree with my thoughts well go ahead and leave a comment down below i do read all of them and try to reply to most of them and while you're there go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button i am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the series and i'm getting really really close once again my name is neon noir at miss neon noir on all social platforms and i'll see you next week Bye bye